Hello, and, uh, well, my god, let's put this down here. Welcome back. Um, uh, so, uh, here I believe we have a new Trish part. Uh, let's see, Trish Rao Alpha, plus a trailer. Trish game. Uh, so uh, let's see the the file size is a hundred megabytes and I without spoiling myself or on anything important I did there do seem to be new pictures and stuff that would signify new content so I believe the overall story may be finished uh, maybe I don't know well we'll see how it goes but it should be enough for at least another part. Also, the yeah, the Boru's a little different now, I think. I don't know if the links I've been putting in the description will redirect or what, but I'm the type of person that will go back through every video just to change that one little detail. <laughs> There's also a Spanish translation. Uh, uh, well, let's see what else. Uh, roses on hiatus, unfortunately, but what can you do? I, I have to wait. At least there's Trish. So, uh, let's just watch this. Okay, I don't know about actually watching the trailer. Uh, I think that music might be, uh, a little fucky wucky. 40 view <laughs> unlisted bad girlfriend theory of a dead man scars and souvenirs <laughs> well then <laughs> oh and one more thing there's also instead of just fang fridays and snoot saturdays there's also snoot sundays <laughs> sunday 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 and saturday all right, now we can continue, I guess. Do you guys want anything? True to her word, Trish immediately gets up from the floor, grabbing my shopping bag by the door and looking back down at us, expecting an answer. Wow, now is that a faux pas or what? I'm so put off by her actions that I just can't even. Uh, Reed, on the other hand, seems to be off in his own little bubble of depression. I wish Fang could be here. He looks up at Trish as if asking, Don't you? Well, if you guys want nothing, I'll just get some nachos. I'll be back in a sec. And by the way, Reed... Who? The next morning... Trish! Trish! Oh, this is stupid. What am I doing here? Talking to myself in the rain. That's what I'm doing. At least there's barely anyone around at this hour to see me be a loser. All my shouting has done was to, was to scare a couple of stray rats. The way Trish left the apartment had... Uh, the way Trish left the apartment had Reed and me majorly confused, to say the least. Things are a little hazy, but I sort of remember a concerned shouting match and me leaving to find Trish as Reed kept yelling something about waiting for him. I could not find her, though not from a lack of effort. I checked all the nearby stores face up against the glass like some weird weird hobo or a moth drawn the lot. <laughs> I've checked the spot we used to meet up at. I've checked all the bus stops, the beach. I've tried calling her, of course, but either she still hasn't gotten to her phone or it's turned off. In my desperation, I came all the way out here to little Judon, to no avail, naturally. It's just my luck that the rain started falling, too. Popping my collar for a 
modicum of protection, I look up towards the dark skies, enjoying the cold shower in an ironic way. I guess this is what normal people call bittersweet. The discordant pattering of the little droplets of rain keep me awake, while at the same time the serenity of it helps calm me down. Even though it's making me shiver, I can find some joy in the cool temperature. Days were getting way too hot these past weeks, so this morning shower is a welcome change. It doesn't lift my mood any, but at least I can appreciate being alive now. Kinda. I try figuring out where things turned this wrong that, that while I'm out. I try figuring out where things turned this wrong now that I'm out here, tired and alone, soaking wet in the morning cold. Especially when I could be in my nice, warm, cozy bed instead. All the answers elude me. Could I have missed her somehow? Maybe she's already back at the party. No, they would have called me then. I check on my phone and to make extra sure I haven't missed out any calls or messages. And holy fuck, is that the time? School's gonna start in two hours. Oh, they edited every little one, I guess. I should, uh, go home. I get my stuff and change, but no, no time for that. Suki will murder me if I'm late for any class ever again. Slice me up like a watermelon. Dead on. <laughs> Man, I don't want to go to fucking school today, though. Did I really lose track of time this bad? Well, I get her, better get my ass over there and do it soon. Like, before I collapse on the sidewalk. Sleeping in class sounds like a much better alternative anyways. Half an hour later, I still don't want to be going. Should I call in sick, go home and rest? I just, if, I feel like nothing in my life makes sense anymore. This whole relationship with Trish has been one wild roller coaster. And I want to get off. There's no getting off of Mr. Bone's wild ride, let me tell you. I mean, at first I was afraid to even talk to her. Like, on the rare occasions, I knew what to say anyways. Then we got together and I feel like the luckiest fool out there. And it was great. I was coming out of my shell, really honestly enjoying life for the very first time in my life. Because I, I wasn't just a loser anymore. There was someone actually interested in me. But then we started fighting about stuff. And I mean, I guess that's just normal for any couple, natural for any couple. We did make up rather fast anyway. Passionately at that. And again, I was the happiest motherfucker alive. But then Trish started becoming distant again. That's what it felt like anyways. Except the times she wasn't. It's this endless back and forth with her. One day we're best pals, but the next she can't even stand looking at me. And that would be one thing too. But all the lies she tells to, I don't know, save face? Not to mention the play acting. It's just that there's this constant feeling of ambigu- ambigu- <sighs> Idiot. Ambigu- gu Ambiguity. I forgot. I, I hear people say it. I remember how to say it. But my mind just won't say it. And I have no idea what's happening to me anymore. Let alone control any of it. But at the same time, it feels like it's my fault. 
Because it's the end. Wait. Because in the end, I'm just a retard, am I not? I'm just a based retard. I have no idea how to handle people. So it's not all that hard to imagine I'd suck ass being a boyfriend, too. I just... I don't know... I don't feel like I, I've actually fucked anything up. How on earth could any of this be my fault? And now Trish is gone, fuck knows where. Hope she hasn't, like, killed herself or anything. What is with these... <laughs> these mods and and the girls <laughs> what is with that I don't like this trend I mean I can't see that happening but it's not like I expected her to deny Fang's existence either huh? oh midst my musings I haven't noticed that I've arrived at the school the rain's let up, too. There, ha there aren't many students around, so I'm probably a little early, making me wish I've gone home to change like I wanted to. Anyway, so, were I to miraculously find Trish, what would I even say to her? What would she say to me? Hey, yeah, I'd want to go on another date. We can fuck afterwards, and the next day I'll ghost you, because that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I totally love you, but from an arm's length away. Here, honey, I got you this leash for our anniversary. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and a ball and chains to go with it. Good God. I linger around the front entrance for a good chunk of time, afraid that if I go to tr go to class, Trish will actually be there like nothing's going on. It's funny how much I want to find her, know she's okay, and I'm afraid of it at the same time. She's become so unpredictable. What if she tried to deny it happened? What if she tried to deny our relationship? deny me. Even thinking about it hurts like a bitch, because after all that's happened, I still care about her. Maybe that's just her precision, condi precision conditioning at work, but fuck it. What I'm feeling is real, and I don't care about the rest. Let's just hope I'm not a, just a fool in love. first few periods pass with no Trish. With how nervous I am, sleeping sleeping is out of the question. So instead, to soothe my nerves, I try distracting myself by actually paying attention to the teachers. It's a partial success. Alright, which frickin' what are you frickin' freeloaders? Gotta finish the frickin' problem on the frickin' board. I'm slower than the rest of my peers to duck my head, which to Mr. Carl Dusky automatically translates to me volunteering. Annan, get your frickin' ass over here! With a sigh, I submit myself to the inevitable round of humiliation, waddling to the whiteboard in between the desk. I half expect one of the preppy asshole-looking dinos to trip me, but thankfully, nothing of the sort happens. I spend a good two minutes trying to make sense of the various hier hieroglyphs chalked on the chalked on the board. Slowly working my way through the po problem, I can practically feel the burning gaze of the other students on my back, and I cringe every time a piece of the chalk breaks off. Once I'm done, I step back and circle the answer. Looking at Kaluski expectantly. He checks the time on his watch, then nods and motions for me to go back to my desk. I don't need to be asked twice. You better write this down, because this is going to be on the frickin' test. Now then, 
The principal has asked me to take all y'all to the auditorium. He's got a frickin' announcement to make. Immediately, the classroom is, ex is filled with excited murmurs, as opposed to, to the exasperated sighs you'd expect. Apparently, they all know something I don't. Maybe it's a school thing. I try listening in on the hushed whispers around me, only catching bits and pieces of every conversation. My best dress, do you think he'll ask? Gotta get some. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. So what I can surmise is that there's certainly some big event coming up, though I'm not familiar enough with local traditions to know what. By the time we arrive at the auditorium, the auditorium is pretty much full, just like it, just like it was back during the memorial. The whole school seems to be gathered here, and most everyone seems to be excited about the upcoming announcement. Except for me, of course. On another day, maybe the mysterious nature of the whole situation would intrigue me, but not today. My life is interesting enough already. Plus, thanks to the downpour from from the morning, the whole room has this choking, musky scent that makes me dizzy. With all the seats taken, uh, Kalduski takes tells us to stand by the back wall, so that's what we do. I'm actually quite happy about not having to press up against any scaly assholes in these in those narrow rows. This way I can pull pull the trick I did last time too, keeping close to the door so I can escape if things turn south. Soon Spears appears on the podium, and after rejecting the microphone, a, a, tra a technician hands him to address. He Soon Spears appears on the podium, and after rejecting the microphone, a technician hands him, he addresses us loudly. All right, everyone, listen up. Having grabbed the attention of everyone within a file, five mile radius, he softens his voice, meaning it only makes my teeth clink together with every other syllable. But hey, now we don't have to worry about the ceiling coming down. Next month is will be what is possibly the highlight of your time here at Volcano High. Prom. That's right. Tomorrow we will be so okay. I tune out at that point, suddenly going weak at the knees. Prom. Such a short word, and yet it still manages to make my already upside down world much more complicated. For years now I've been afraid of graduating for several reasons, but having to survive prom was one of the bigger ones. Except with all that's been going on with Trish, I've totally forgot the stupid thing even existed. So Spears dumping it on us with the subtlety of a brick wall took me took me unprepared. I was already feeling a little nauseous thanks to the pungent and used air, but now I'm straight up about to get sick. Without a second's hesitation, I slink out the door, trudging all the way to the gardens to get some fresh air. I put my back against the wall and close my eyes, trying to calm my mind and stomach. It really does help with both, with both that the garden has all sorts of flavors, filling the air with, the, with their sweet fragrance. Well, other than the damn pollen flo floating, floating about, making me sneeze. Ugh. Yeah, I really didn't need another item added to, to my list of problems. I mean, it's like, when I think about a social event like that, my first instinct would be, other than absolutely ditching it, to bring Trish. That's what a couple our age should do, right? I'm sure she'd want to go anyways. Show off to everyone how pretty she is and all that. But... Yeah, maybe first I'd have to find find her to do that. Then there's the whole take, talking things through part of the story. 
because I'm sure as shit not taking her to prom just so she can unleash a new set of mind games on me. If only I knew it. Wait. Hold the fucking phone for a sec. I know exactly where she is. Led by this sudden flash of inspiration, I jogged to the other side of the building, to the spot where Fang fell, fell that fateful day. And... Trish was just standing in front of that bush, staring at the leaves dancing in the breeze. A sudden, stronger gust of wind makes her shudder, but she rights herself almost immediately. So, what should I do? Yeah, no shit, that's why I've been looking for her all over town. So, what do I say? Let's think about this carefully. Is that really a good idea? Won't we just get into a fight like that? Well, let's come up with a tactic. What if I just see what Trish has to say about all this and go from there? Uh, right, so Trish had that feather on her guitar's neck. There'd be no reason to have it there if it didn't mean anything to her. She must still care about Fang, and I wager she cares about them more than herself even. I mean, it's possible she put the feather there way back in the past and forgot about it, but I'm not buying that. Guess I'll try to bring that up and see where it goes. But none of, nonetheless, I should figure out an overall strategy too. What if I just see what Trish has to say about all this and go from there? Oh. Yeah, I guess if I don't immediately bring up the elephant in the room, then uh, then maybe, just maybe, Trish will let her guard down. And then I'll bring in the loaded gun. <laughs> she won't be able to back out of that one. She'll just <laughs> she'll just punch you in the stomach again and run. Okay, cool. I'll be covert, but still, I'll I'll confront Trish about well everything pretty much. About Fang, about her feelings for me, just everything. But what's my end game here? What is it that I want to achieve? What is this? This is a weird way to do choices. Uh, like I'm, I'm not entirely sure which ones actually lead towards a slightly different divergence that goes back, that goes back into the main story, you know? Yeah. I just want us to be happy, that's all. With a soft spring in my steps, not looking as chill and casual as I can, I walk up to Trish. Uh, hey. At first she just looks back over her shoulder, only turning to properly address me when she sees it's me standing behind her. Looks at, looks like at least she hasn't erased my existence from her new reality. Yet. Hi, Annan. We go nowhere fast after that. Guess I should have spent more time thinking about what I'm going to say. Well, let's try to act normal. Okay. Alright, yeah. 
Thank you. So, uh, plants will be starting soon. Actually, I don't know if that's true. I have no idea how long Spears' announcement is going to be. I just want to get the ball rolling. I'm having a day off. I see. So, what are you doing here? Hope that wasn't too direct. Figured I'll come in to surprise you. Yeah, I'm surprised, all right. So, you're just, like, taking a stroll through the garden, cuz? Cuz there's still time till the end of this period. She's got an answer for goddamn everything. Fuck it, I can't keep up the charade any longer. I'm not even angry anymore. I'm just... I'm just tired. So fucking tired. Look, Trish, we both know that. I mean... I don't know why you bother to talk to me now if you can't even be honest with me. What do you expect from me? What do you want from me? What I expect from you... She takes my face into her tiny hands. I expect you to kiss me. And by the time we're done kissing, I expect you to love me. And I expect you to stay with me. That is what I want from you. That is what I want for us. I want us both to be happy, together. I won't have some nobody dead paradactyl fuck, fuck up the rest of my life. Boo hoo, people die. We'll graduate soon and then we'll get away from this place and from all these losers. It's gonna be us against the world. Don't you wanna be happy with me? Have kids, start a family. Don't you want things to go back to normal? I'm speechless, both horrified and mesmerized by her words. I know what she's saying is terribly wrong, but... Don't you want things to go back to normal? The words echo in my mind over and over and over again. Don't you want things to go back to normal? That, that's the only thing I've ever wanted. And now I can have it. All I have to do is admit nothing is wrong, even though everything is. A normal life. A family, kids, Trish, and it costs nothing more than a kiss. Unable to resist the temptation any longer, I slowly, never so slowly, reach for Trisha's face. My hands wrap her waist, helping prop her up to her toes, as she always does. Our lips find each other, sealing the deal now and forever. The kiss lasts long. In place of the guilt I know I should be feeling, I, I feel only relief. Okay, maybe a bit of de desperation, and, and with just a hint of shame. More importantly, though, it's over now. We can finally be happy. The lie is still there. Yeah, but at least I'll be on, on the inside of it. It's just like Trish said. It's going to be us against the world. And if that means we gotta be happy, then the whole wide world can go fuck itself. Eventually, we let go of each other, silent for just a couple more seconds. Then, as if to prove she's gonna be true to her word, Trish puts on the familiar smug smile I've seen a hundred times on her face. Okay, you big monkey, so are you gonna ask me about out to prom or what? How do you even know about 
Spears does this his little announcement around the same time every year. I already have my dress and everything. Oh, so that's how all these assholes knew something was up. It makes so much more sense now. Right? Yeah. So, isn't there something you want to ask me? There's only about a million things I want to ask her. Though I don't think she means any of those after her little speech. Like what? Oh, prom, you jackass. You want to ask me out to, for prom. <laughs> I knew that. So, uh, I have no idea how this goes. Especially, uh, especially after, not after the calamity we just endured. Normal people make it look so easy, talking to girls. Guess I should be kneeling. Now what are you doing? <laughs> Asking you out? Why are you... Never mind, just get on with it. Um... Trish? Yes. Prom? Wow, Anna, that was so very romantic. I think my heart just stopped. Yes or no, motherfucker? <laughs> yes. Okay, now that that's over with. Oh, thank God, that was fucking stressful. <laughs> it sure is. Don't ever make me do that again. It might have even trumped the whole Trish running away thing, all in all. <laughs> Fine, probably not. Want to ditch the rest of the day? Sure, but can we do that? Well, I've already skipped half of it, so... Aren't you just going to get in trouble? No, I'll say it was a family thing. I can fake Dad's signature. And I bet Spears will look the other way for you. Why would he? Of all the things in the world, that's the least probable, by a wide margin. Like, it's pissing into a bottle from top of the tribe state building. <laughs> Improbable. <laughs> tribe state building, what the fuck? Because you're his little favorite. Pretty good. <laughs> Bull. Oh, he told me so. I'm, I've i met him standing around here this morning. He asked me how you were doing and everything. Wow. Oh. I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know how to feel about anything, really. How are we having this regular-ass conversation just now, anyways? Five minutes ago, I was... About ready to break off this whole thing. Now we're best chumps again. Doesn't make any sense. Come on, Spear Chucker. Let's get out of here. Right after you, Trigger. Mm. Seems like being called a racial slur inspired Trish to an idea. How about we go back to your place, get some privacy, and uh, do something naughty? Oh, hell yeah! I can totally see where this is going. Just the two of us back at. Wait. Back at. The two of. Oh, shit. Fuck! What's wrong? Reed! I fucking forgot about fucking Reed! Shit, hope he didn't try to get down the stairs and break his neck. Is it, 
is that why he hasn't been calling? Now that would make me feel like a major dick. Oh my god, Annan, are you telling me he's still... Yeah, I, I think. Remind me again, why did I just ask a dipshit like you to spend our lives together? Because you love me. One rather awkward trek in the skin row later, I'm just about to enter the apartment as Trish grabs my arm, stopping me dead in my tracks. Remember, Annan, it's us against the world. Reed isn't me, and Reed isn't you. If he's got a problem with us, then that then it's his fucking problem, not ours. Wait, what? That's not... She can't mean... An icy cold chill crawls up my back, and at once the weight of the choice I've made comes crashing down on my shoulders. You don't want to be Reed's friend anymore? Uh, let's put it this way, I don't mind being his friend. But if he starts any shit, that's on him. If he starts any shit. Come on, Trish. The likelihood of a fight breaking out is pretty damn high. Annan, is that you, Gus? <laughs> it's like the it's like the end of like a cartoon where they realize that they forgot about somebody that they left and and it just cuts back to him and he's like Guys I'm still here. Are you there? Hello? <laughs> well, the voice comes from the other side of the door, meaning that Reach still is, in fact, there, here. Fuck, he must have heard our voices. My hand's been on that doorknob this whole time. My hand that's been on the doorknob this whole time goes numb and the unease over me increases ten, tenfold. My guts, like slippery snakes, twist up. In the conscious part of my mind, I know that now I'll get to, get to face the consequences of the pact I've made with the miniature purple devil next to me. It's all according to plan. I try to reassure myself with the knowledge that even though Reed is the first and biggest obstacle barring us from a happy future, he should also be the last. With jello legs, I enter the apartment. <laughs> you guys! Reed sitting on, sitting on the bed opposite of the door, his eyes immediately fixated on me. With those eyes, I can see he's ju ju just about to drop a well-deserved string of obscenities at me only holding back as he notices Trish waltzing into the room behind me. The air is thick with anticipation. So, you found her. Uh, found me? The party ended, so I went home. Then I went to school. You what? Reed's eyes dart back, back and forth between the two of us, unsure of what to make of this new development. After scolding my autistic ass for leaving him here, I imagine he, th he thought we'd find and drill Trish, tr find and drill Trish after she spilled the beans and all that jazz. No, Trish, you said you were gonna go get us more snacks. And and you said. Whatever he's about to say, Trish doesn't give him the chance. No, that's not what I said. I said the party was over and I was going home. Then I went to school. This time it's Trish who looks at me, expecting me to back her up. She's expecting me to lie. Funny, I used to have no problem lying my way out of anything, and yet now my chest feels so heavy as if I was deep underwater. Guess it's time to commit. Yeah, Reed, <laughs> what are you talking about, you fucking idiot? 
I can practically hear glass shattering as Reed recognizes the reality of the situation. I'm not here to help him fix Trish. Annan, not you two. I cannot fathom how alone he must feel right now, betrayed so cold, coldly by his friends. I don't believe you guys. I don't believe you guys. Fang, I'm talking about Fang, Trish. Your best friend. Lucy. I don't know anyone by that name. The way Reed recoils looks as if someone just physically punched him. You don't... you... Why do you think I have all this shit on my leg? Why was I in the hospital? Tell me, Trish, who shot me? You can't... you can't escape... You can't expect me to keep track of all your drug dealer stuff. Fine, I get it now. This isn't about reasons. This is all about you making yourself feel better. And fuck everyone else, right? You're the only one who hurts here. Well, I'm not going to be a part of that. And you, Annan? If you're going to let her do this, then I want nothing to do with you. I'm out of here. Through, through the open door, we can hear Reed running as he tries to descend the staircase. And without thinking about it, I move to go help him. Only to be stopped by Trish blocking the door. Where are you going? The Reed and the, the stairs? Figured I should. Why? He's not us. Oh goodness. What a relationship. Relationship goals. He's not us. Well, no, but he left. It was his decision. Bitch. Did you hear that prick? If you let me. Like I don't have a brain of my own. For all I care, he can break his asshole neck right now. I still don't know what to say to that. For, a minute, for another minute or so, we can clearly still hear Reed's troubled descent. But thankfully, there's no big crash or anything like that. He should... Honestly, would you, if he had to do that, he should probably do it on his ass. Sit down on each step and get down like that. That'd probably be the safest way to do it. But is it any good? I don't know, Ackman. You tell me. Modern gaming. Then, as the noises die down, Trish closes the door. Come on, I want to cuddle. Then I'll let you pick what we want. How about that? Uh, can I pick titties? I like anime titties. We can watch Valkyrie Drive. Or hen, or man, you hacken chow. Yes, you can. Everything just turned around like the best girlfriend ever. One month later. The following weeks have been a learning experience. Same as Reed, pretty much all of our friends and acquaintances turned their backs on us after hearing the news. Or like we turned our backs on them. It was a mutual back turning. Stella proved the Stella proved the only exception to the rule, because even though she was a, uh, she was deeply deeply disappointed with us, at least she didn't sever all contact. And I mean, it wasn't like I could disagree disagree with them or anything. Sure, I kept up the play, but I knew they were in the right. 
It was a fucked up thing we did. At least that's what I thought for a long time. It wasn't until prom came around that I started seeing things in a different light. The night prior, I was so nervous I could hardly sleep. So instead, I stayed up thinking about all sorts of things while listening to the slow mechanical clicking of the ceiling fan. Mm. I couldn't justify the awful things Trish, Trish has done, but wasn't me transferring here just the same? Hey, I could have stayed, learned to behave, grow up, mature, and so on. I could have stood my ground, faced my problems. And maybe I should have too. But I ran away. I, I, I've escaped the... But I ran away. I've escaped the responsibility. And nobody gave me shit for that. But if I had friends there, would they have? Would I have gotten into the same arguments, gotten the same accusations, the same cold shoulder treatment? Everyone, and I do mean everyone, is looking down on Trish for turning a blind eye to her issues. Blatantly so. They all act like she's the worst person to ever exist, the lowest point on the moral compass. And I mean, like, yeah, I can't exactly say they're unbiased. But in the end, this is Trish's way of cutting her losses short. If she couldn't move on, what else was there to do? Would I have had an easier time turning around years of humiliation than Trish raising Frank Fang from the grave? My train of thought is interrupted by a loud siren. Blue lights illuminating the room as the pl as a police car drives by. I toss and turn, trying to find a cool spot. Ugh, this place is just the worst. Fuck this goddamned weather. I didn't think there'd be anything I could miss from Rock Bottom, but at least the weather was there was consistent. S spring, summer, autumn, winter. Here, it, here it's warm and humid, day after day after day. And that damn fog. I used to love fog. I used to like rainy days too, spending them inside without screen glare. Things have changed, I guess. I turn onto my back again, staring up at the dimly lit ceiling. What will my life look like one year from now? How much will things have changed by then? Will I still be with Trish? After Jesus, I hope so. But by then, I'll have graduated too. Will I go to college? Trish has been non-stop drilling me about studying for our finals. So it's not impossible. What about the others? Will they have forgiven us? Are we just going to forget forget each other? I mean, it feels bad now to think I'd never talk to Reed or Stella again, but would it really be that bad? I certainly don't miss anyone from my old school. Not even the very limited amount of other nerds I more or less knew. And it's only been a couple of months. We will be adults for a long, lot longer than that. In 10, 20, 50 years. What would, me, what would my life be like then? I mean, even if we tried to keep it, keep in contact with the people here, be friends, would I remember all of their voices, their faces, what they were like? The movies make it seem like high school friendships are forever, but are they really? In the long run, is it really such a big loss to have a few heads turned the other way? If it's for us, for Trish, that does, doesn't that make it worth it? We got what we wanted, so... It's not like we were just pretending to be happy, right? With a sigh, I sit up, surrendering the, f 
to fight to find a cold spot and instead flip the, the pillows fully. Ah, oh, sweet salvation. I stretch and yawn loudly. 2 a.m. Damn. Another yawn. Anyways, where was I? I don't know. Must have been something stupid too, if I forgot this fast. Whatever. Let's catch some Z's before I end up a zombie tomorrow. The next day. I, th I thank the cab driver and get out, dusting off my suit one last time to make it absolutely immaculate, smoothing out all the wrinkles. I want to be on my best, be on my on best for Trish, mostly because I know she'll expect me to. And who could that possibly be? Classes have been cancelled for the day. No doubt so that everyone can get in their last minute details. Going to get their manicure done or whatever it is dinos do. So at least I can make sure the suit is extra hyper super presentable. Not only for Trish, but because it's actually my dad's. Lent to me after I told him about going, getting a date to prom. Both my parents have been positively ecstatic about their little boy ma managing to ensnare a girl. Their words. I simply didn't tell them how in the process I'm making a par paradactyl roll around in Zerk. <laughs> so, so, there's that. Sorry. We don't serve trans fats here. Either way, I'm here now in front of said ensnared girl's home. It's a much nicer neighborhood than I was anticipating. All the houses looking like posh little estates. There's a lot of greenery too, unlike the concrete jungle that is Skin Row. There's a municipal garden sort of deal as well. Neat little cabbage patches lining the way. Cabbage Patch Kids, Jesus. Do kids today even know about the Garbage Pail Kids? I doubt it. They don't know anything. All they know is their Poppy Playtimes and Freddy Fazbear's and whatnot. But me? I remember Furbies. Those things were fucking awful. That and Teletubbies. That little, that little guy, like the smallest one of the Teletubbies, he ate that pizza. He, he ate that motherfucking pizza, all of it. The others couldn't do it. That's literally the only thing I remember from Teletubbies. Out front, there's a tiny purple dino, Chandra, and I can totally imagine Trish put her ass out here to be on watch in case I arrived. If, if so, she's doing a poor job of it, too busy with her phone to have noticed me. With a sinister smile, I approach the little trigger. The, the triglet. I should not have said that. <laughs> Dead set on getting my revenge for her monetary shenanigans last time. Basically, I want to boop her on her court cute short snout. Does anybody hear police sirens? Anybody? Oh shit. It's the fuzz. <laughs> What are you doing here? Making a mistake? Making a mistake! <laughs> I'm imagining her as the... As the <laughs> I must go shopping. She doesn't give any sign of, sign of minding her surroundings. Not even as I get within, like, two feet of her. 
It's only as I reach my hand out does she acknowledge my existence. Don't you dare, you pervert. And stop smiling like a creep. Why, you little... Okay, now give me my ten bucks. God, God damn it! Ten bucks? How do you figure? Big Sister Trishy said, Hi, Annan. Look at me. Aren't I the 18-year-old prom dream? I can't resist the temptation. You don't look a day over 12,000. Oh, fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you, big monkey in your monkey suit! Did you get it from the dollar store? Yeah, you know, had to match your style. <laughs> fuck you! That game is... That's something else, man. It really is. Uh, they removed Virgil's fedora in the in the re-release, and I will never forgive them for that. I can see the tr rage building up inside Trish, her fist raising to give me a bash on the noggin. To prevent that, I hastily back away. Can't have her wrinkle up my suit or anything. No, I was kidding. You look, uh, very tasteful and ele elegant. To her credit, she actually does look tasteful and elegant. The way her short, tight dress hugs her curves is quite alluring, but are most sophisticated by the tactically transparent parts. It must feel great to touch, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're both very pretty. So, Trish, where's your... Get your butt inside now. But inside? Ugh. Stupido monkey. Stupido Trish. Be a smear, por favor. Did we get it wrong the whole time? <laughs> Was that supposed to be Spanish? She likes it when Rosa comes over. Liked, it's liked now, with a D past tense. Although I'm not brave enough to fix Trish on that minor detail. Taking a look, look around again to hide my awkwardness, I notice a bunch of curious trigger faces peeking out the windows. Trish's little brothers and sisters, no doubt. Holy fuck, there's a lot of them. They look exactly like the sword I'd avoid on instinct, not wanting to get pickpocketed or subjected to a loud, obnoxious mumble rap. I guess Trish is, is the run of the litter or something. Lucked out on that one. Are there older ones? Oh no! Oh no! Better put on a dumb smile and get this torture over with. So are we going inside or... Inside? What for? Uh, don't your parents want to take pictures or anything? Mom... Mom used... Mom used to spend the better half of my... Of, Mom used to spend the better half of any family gathering snapping pictures of the family albums. So I figured that's a thing moms do. Nah. Dad's at work and Mom went for a pack of cigarettes. Could we just wait for her? I said she went for a pack of cigarettes. We're leaving. Alright. I put my elbow out so Trish can grab onto it like I've seen in all the movies. Then we go on our merry, merry way. A picturesque little couple, not nigh the perfect image of teenage love. Except for all those other little details. Arm in arm, we're smiling, laughing, off to share the best night of our lives. Only by looking, nobody could tell of all the pain bottled up inside these smiles. They almost just feel genuine as well. And I'm sure that soon we will, too, 
forget about all the shit we've been through and be truly as happy as we look. Just the two of us against the world. And so it was. Against all odds, we had a blast at prom. We danced, we kissed, and after a lively round of intoxication, we fucked like animals. We were simply happy. No amount of glares by Reed or Hmps <laughs> by Spears could take that away. Nor the pricks of, of pro, or pro, nor the pricks of professors at college or all the douche, douchebag students. Anyone who wasn't us could get bent, like her asses. That was the approach that took us into adulthood proper. And we had it all. Without the sappy, depressed, accusatory losers in our lives to bring us down, we've been able to make all our dreams come true. We moved away, got the good jobs, the car, the house. Shit, we've even got a small shack of a vacation home to take the kids to every summer. But what a life. And our so-called former friends. And we didn't know. We didn't care. How good would it have been to sh shove it in their faces, though? Uh, we're such good people. Guess what, you white knight <laughs> What is the story? <laughs> we were right. Unlike those losers, we know what's important and what isn't. Unlike those losers, we have spine and we can take the shit and come out on top. And now, a decade and a half later, we're finally living the life we've always deserved. Oh, how many more fucking times do I need to honk this fucking horn until those retards move? No, don't... I thought that was the end for a second there, but I guess we're going a little longer. No, don't even tell me. The answer already is two times too many. Come on! Cars were invented to roll. They have wheels. <laughs> they move. Oh, and how the phone goes off, too. I bet it's my asshole manager. Oh, I hate that fucking guy. Oh, it's Trish. Maybe she's getting worried why I'm late. She always gets so emotional when she's pregnant. That's a lot of aunts and uncles, let me tell you. Hey, honey. Oh, so you don't know how to use your phone? Yeah, yeah, I'm stuck in traffic. For how long? I don't know, babe. Some ass clown jumped in front of a truck or something. Don't these people have a sense of decency? Could have offed himself at home. This is, this is a wild-ass story, let me tell you. <laughs> what a bunch of jerks! Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like, hello, people have lives. Not like they would care. Will you have... Will you have time to pick up the... Yeah, yeah, I'll get the diapies, don't worry. Come on, come on, let's fill up those diapies. Uh, you sure? We'll need, to, we'll need two packs because the twins are going through them like crazy. Spare me the details. What do you need? Why don't you send Amy? She is old enough. She'll just spend the money on candy again and you know it. Then, well then we ground her. Don't try to get out of it. Oh, and can you pick up some Starbucks? I guess. Don't back talk. Yes, honey. It's just that I hate going there. 
Last time I got hella served in the parking lot. Is this... Is this a reference to something? Because that... Getting served, hella served in a parking lot sounds kind of familiar to me. I don't know why. So? So I don't like going there. I don't know who's bothering you, but you shouldn't give a fuck about them. They're not us, right? So they don't matter. Guess you're right. Right, you remember our promise. How could I forget? It's us against the world. Yeah, thanks. I love you. Uh, hold on. Little Alberto. Uh, yeah. You called your son Alberto. Okay. Us against the world. Nobody else matters. Let's fucking go. Hold on. Little Alberto puked up his carrots again. Gotta go. Y you... So that's why it's been taking a while. Thank you for playing. In a few clicks, you'll get to the bonus chapter select screen. I advise saving the game right here, right now, before you move forward. Hopefully you can use this save for future updates. Okay. Okay. Let me... Okay, let me... Go back here and see what happens. Uh, leave. Seriously? <laughs> Bye. Hey, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck everything. I'm not gonna go grovel by her feet just so she can grace me with the opportunity to have another fight. No. I've had fucking enough. If Trish doesn't lift a finger to make things right, then I won't either. We're fucking done here. I turn my back to on Trish. No words are said. No words that day. And not the next. Not on the, not on the one after that or any of those that followed. Communication has has ground to a halt between us, encasing the rest of the school year in a weird stasis. We'd see one another in class, and of course, about a week later, Trish did come to pick up her guitar she left in my apartment. But there was no big reunion of wounded souls, no falling into each other's arms with crocodile tears in our eyes, no swearing to the heavens we try again and do it right. <coughs> The fact is, neither of us wanted to. We didn't say it out loud, but that was the only part we unanimous, unanimously agreed on. There was no us anymore. There was Trish, and there was me. Our paths would never cross. Our futures were, futures were no longer shared. Our fates no more intertwined. The weirdest part of it all was that it didn't really hurt me that bad. Sure, in the first few weeks, I was kind of under the weather, but I wouldn't say that I was depressed. I could sleep, eat, shit both, and attend class without any hiccup. After a while, even seeing Trish didn't make me feel anything. We've gone back to square one, to being complete strangers to each other. As the years passed, especially once I've moved a few states away, I started seeing what we had with Trish a little more than a, was a little more than a fling. Fleeting high school romance. I guess I could call Trish my high school sweetheart, or whatever. But she doesn't doesn't quite make it there. You have to have this big an impact. You need to have this big an impact to ride. I don't know. The only mark she permanently left on me was this. What should I call it? Insecurity? I wasn't exactly the most open and sociable person to begin with. But after Trish was through with me, I couldn't really trust anyone again. 
I had this idea that every girl I met met had, had some angle or master plan to use me. I'm quite certain I tanked more than one relationship because of that. So, with no real permanence or constants in life, no relations to, to anyone, and no warm nest with a happy wife and kids to call my home, I took to the road instead. I became a trucker, and was content with that. Nevertheless, as chance would have it, some ten or so years later, that very job took me to Volcadera Bluffs once again. Hello, Fang. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What in the world? <laughs> He's just missing the hat. He probably has those flaps with the silhouette of the girl on him on the back, too. Except it's probably and looks more like an anime girl or something. I flick the cigarette butt away, wondering if I should light another right now or wait five minutes. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. You, uh, you look nice, though. That was true, in a way. In place of the barren spot, this was once a now giant, was now a giant bush tor towered over me. I'm not a biologist or anything, so I don't know the kind or the deli but the delicate pile of flowers, oh, but the delicate pale flowers on it beautifully reflect the student whose life ended here. That's right. The layout of the garden changed some, but I could still find Fang's grave. I figured I might as well tell her my life story, not like any other girl would listen to me tell it. I know we uh, haven't talked a lot in, back in the day, but I'm grown up, all grown up now. I laugh a little, although my coarse voice is dry as the desert. I mean, I'm mostly the same, it's just the world has changed. I used to, I used to know this place pretty well, but now all these streets and buildings are alien to me. Guess I'm the stranger here because, cause, you know, I've been far away for a decade. I'm a trucker now. It's a pretty good gig. At least I don't have to talk to a lot of people. I, uh, I'll probably see if I can find my way to my old apartment, too. Funny, the half year I spent there felt, felt so long at the time, but looking back on it now... It's like, whoosh, nothing. Guess I should call that a blessing, huh? Not a lot of good memories. What's that thing? No, I, uh, I don't think I'll look up Trish. She probably doesn't live around here anymore. Anyways. Oh, I thought I heard noises from over here. I'm sorry, sir. This place is... This is the wildest shit I've ever seen in my life. Could it be? <laughs> hey, Stella. Oh my god. Annan. What? As words fail her, she runs to me, relentlessly embracing me in a painfully tight hug. It's so nice to see you. Well, wow, she certainly hasn't changed much. Still as bubbly as ever. Although it's not like I've expected to run into her, into her of all people here. Going by her getup, I'd say she's a gardener or something. It fits her, I guess. Awkwardly, I back out of the hug, having to practically pry Stella's arms off me. It's, it's nice to see you too. Gosh, this is... it's so exciting. Where have you been all this time? Are you back for good? Do you... I hold my hand out to make Stella sh shut up. 
I'm barely able to keep pace with her already. Ah, mere kids of work. I won't stay for long. Oh. Stella visibly deflates, hearing that I'm just passing by. Makes me a little sad, but it's not my problem. How long are you staying? I'm not sure exactly. I'm waiting on another guy to haul his load here, but he got into a bad storm and blew a tire upstate. Could take a day or two. A couple of days, maybe. Why? I was thinking maybe... Look at me. Fucking look at me. Do you want this? Because it doesn't look good. It looks fucked up. Let me tell you. You don't, you don't want that. Would you, um, would you like to grab a cup of coffee with me? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure you're all busy with, uh, I'm just really like, you know, uh, I don't want to be a bother. I wouldn't mind at all. Nah, yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll pass, sorry. Oh. Yeah, I, I guess I'll have to, you know, get out of your hair. She nods, looking at the ground. I'm real sorry to have shut her down like this, especially after how excited she was to see me, but I'm a real idiot, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's chronic. I'm not here to be anyone's emotional baggage dumping grounds, or a living dildo. Listen, I'm good with that. I don't mind. I'll take anything. Doesn't matter. Whatsoever. <laughs> there must be a good reason as to why Stella is single, and I'm not about to find out. Yeah, I'm done with that sort of thing. We say awkward goodbyes to each other, then I go straight back to the motel room I've rented, rented before coming here. It's one of the cheaper ones. I spend the following two days cooped up there, as I always do in between halls. Not, not talking to anyone unless necessary. It's, it's not a bad life to lead. Simplicity is beautiful. I'm finally invisible like I've always wanted to be. And there's no stupid girls to play with my emotions. Nobody forces me to care about things I don't want to care about. I do what I want and when I want to. Yeah, this is the laugh. My laugh. Ending two of six distances. The Muscle Trish Dream. Okay, so these are just bonuses for the mod, is what I'm assuming. And the, then there's the actual endings. So the bonuses aren't here, but the but the endings, I guess, are done. So that's what I'm assuming, anyways. Nope, no, no, I do not. Hungry? How does it taste? Great. Wow. These are home-baked. Do you want time to finish your cookie, or...? Um, not really. Okay, so you're good. If I ask you a couple questions. You know what? I don't want this cookie. I just want to get to the beach. Come here. Just one second, sir. Uh, 